let's look at a couple more examples of how to evaluate limits algebraically when those functions for which we are trying to find limit are piece functions. So here we have a function f of x that is defined with three different pieces and we are trying to find the limit as you approach 1. So as we've seen earlier, you need to determine if the limit from the right of 1 is equal to the limit from the left of 1. So let's start with the left. So think through it again. If you're approaching 1 from the left, that means we're approaching 1 through values less than 1. So you're coming up towards 1. Again, think, think of a number line. So you're coming through numbers such as 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, finally landing at 1. So if you think about which of these pieces applies for numbers such as those, it's going to be the first piece. So it's into that first piece that we're going to substitute 1 in place of the x. So that gives us 5. So now we consider the limit as we approach 1 from the right. So if we are approaching 1 from the right, that means we're approaching 1 through values larger than 1. So we're coming down towards 1 through numbers such as 1.6, 1 1.5, 1 1.4, 1 1.3, 1 1.2, 1 1.1, .1, finally landing at 1. So if you think about which of these three pieces applies for those values larger than 1, notice it's going to be the last piece, the 7 minus 2x. So it's into that piece that we substitute our 1. And that gives us 5 as well. So therefore, since the limit from the right equals the limit from the left, we can conclude overall that the limit of this function as we approach 1 is going to equal 5. Now, one little note about this. Notice nowhere did we use that middle piece. All right. If you think about what this might look like graphed, let me see if I can draw a picture of it really quick. So here we have a graph of this piece function. The yellow point that you see right here, that is this middle one right here, 2. Uh, the green line is the first one, this one right here. And the silver one is the last piece. All right, notice that with the first and last piece, they are open, it, it, they have an open hole there at the very top. So here's 1 right there and you can see as you approach 1 from the left and the right you're approaching the location of that hole which happens to be at 5. Alright so really that middle piece at the point 1 comma 2 it's almost there I guess to almost throw you off if you want to think of it that way. So don't be fooled by it. So let's take a look at another example. Once again, we have a piece function defined by three pieces. This time we have a function j. So let's take a look first at the limit as we approach negative 2 from the left. So if you're approaching negative 2 from the left, remember that means you're approaching negative 2 through values less than negative 2. So in that case, it's the first piece that applies for those types of x values. And that is a constant function always equal to positive 2. Now if we consider the limit as we approach negative 2 from the right, remember that means we're talking about numbers just a little bit bigger than negative 2. So we're approaching negative 2 through numbers such as negative 1.6, negative 1.7, negative 1.8, negative 1.9, and finally negative 2. So if you think about which piece applies for those types of x values, it's going to be the middle piece, the square root function. So we'd have square root of 4 minus, and we have to square the negative 2. So when we do that, we get 0. 
So this is a case in which obviously the limit from the right does not equal the limit from the left. So therefore we conclude overall that the limit as x approaches negative 2 of this function does not exist. So let's see if once again I can come up with a quick graph of it for you so you can see it visually. So here I created a graph of this for you. The green one is this one up here, the constant function 2 when your x's are less than negative 2. Notice it's an open circle there at the hole at negative 2 comma positive 2. The square root function is essentially an, a, a semicircle, really. That's the part you see in yellow. Color coded it for you. And finally, the last piece is another constant function down there at negative 2 when your x's are greater than positive 2. So in this case, we were concerned with approaching negative 2, and you can see that there's a jump discontinuity there between the green and the orange. So that's the pieces basically do not match up and that's why the limit does not exist.